you return? Might you have news? Unchanged, I'm afraid. We've tried more magical healing, but nothing works. As time passes, I become more and more convinced the urn might be our only hope. Yes, but they are returning slowly. No doubt the war's progress, as well as the Darkspawns, hinders many of them. You have? Wonderful. Let us go at once to Eamon's side and see if the urn's healing powers live up to their reputation. You have been deathly ill for a very long time. Do you remember nothing? Tegan? What are you doing here? Where is Isolde? I am here, my husband. I'm Connor. Where is my boy? Where is our son? He lives. Though many others are dead. There is much to tell you, husband. Dead? Then... It was not a dream. Much has happened since you fell ill, brother. Some of it will not be... Easy for you to hear. Then tell me. I wish to hear all of it. This is most troubling. There is much to be done, that is true. But I should first be thankful to those who have done so much. Grey Warden, you have not only saved my life, but kept my family safe as well. I am in your debt. Will you permit me to offer you a reward for your service? I understand, but regardless of your motivations, I feel you are worthy of a reward. I would like to honor your efforts, nothing more. Then allow me to declare you and those traveling with you champions of Redcliffe. You will always be a welcome guest within these halls. And for you, Warden, a shield of the same make as those that have been given to our finest knights. We should speak of Loghain, brother. There is no telling what he will do once he learns of your recovery. Loghain instigates a civil war even though the Darkspawn are on our very doorstep. Long I have known him, he is a sensible man. One who never desired power. I was there when he announced he was taking control of the throne, Eamon. He is mad with ambition, I tell you. Mad indeed. Mad enough to kill Caelan to attempt to kill myself and destroy my lands. Whatever happened to him, Loghain must be stopped. What's more, we can scarce afford to fight this war to its bitter end. I could unite those opposing Loghain, yes. But not all oppose him. He has some very powerful allies. We have no time to wage a campaign against him. Someone must surrender if Ferelden is to have any chance at fighting the Darkspawn. No, not at all. Loghain is responsible for heinous crimes, and I intend to see him pay. But our armies must be reserved for the Darkspawn, not for each other. I will spread word of Loghain's treachery, both here and against the King. But it will be but a claim made without proof. Those claims will give Loghain's allies pause. But we must combine it with a challenge Loghain cannot ignore. We need someone with a stronger claim to the throne than Loghain's daughter, the Queen. Are you referring to Alistair, brother? Are you certain? I would not propose such a thing if we had an alternative. But the unthinkable has occurred. Tegan and I have a claim through marriage, but we would seem opportunists no better than Loghain. Alistair's claim is by blood. And what about me? Does anyone care what I want? You have a responsibility, Alistair. Without you, Loghain wins. I would have to support him for the sake of Ferelden. Is that what you want? I... But, but I... No, my lord. I see only one way to proceed. I will call for a landsmeet. A gathering of all of Ferelden's nobility in the city of Denerim. There, Ferelden can decide who shall rule, one way or another. Then the business of fighting our true foe can begin. What say you to that, my friend? I do not wish to proceed without your blessing. Why do you think he had me poisoned? He wanted me gone without having to confront me directly. If I call for a landsmeet, 
Refusing the compromise and attacking Redcliffe will only support our accusations. I'm sure he'd rather I died from the poison. Had the demon not interfered, that's exactly what would have happened. You have already found allies, but we need those to fight Darkspawn. I truly believe the Landsmeet is our best option. We could attempt to wage a military campaign against Loghain, but even if we win, would we have enough left to defeat the Darkspawn? No, but neither would Loghain. Perhaps Loghain gambles on this attitude. That everyone will decide facing the Darkspawn is more vital than facing him, so that he leads us against the Horde. Very well. I will send out the word. But before we proceed, I believe there is the matter of the mage, my son's tutor. He still lives, I understand. He does. He is in the dungeon, brother. Have him brought here, Tegan. I wish to see him. Jowan, what you have done is not in question. You tried to assassinate me and set into motion a series of events that nearly destroyed everything I cherish. What have you to say in your own defense? Nothing, my lord. Other than to say I am sorry. I expect no mercy for what I've done. I see. Grey Warden, have you anything to say on Jowan's behalf? Oh? That is... unexpected. And what would you have me do? As the injured party, my ability to see the merciful path is... strained. True enough, and wisely said. Jowan. I hereby turn you over to the Tower of the Circle of Magi. May the Maker have mercy on your soul. Thank you, my lord. Now, back to the matter of the Landsmeet. It will take some time to recall my forces and organize our allies. I would prefer to wait until that is done before calling the Landsmeet. In the meantime, I suggest you pursue the remainder of the Grey Warden treaties. We will need all the allies we can get if we are to defeat the Darkspawn Horde. This... this is my mother's amulet. It has to be. But why isn't it broken? Where did you find it? I suppose there might have been other amulets like these made. But I've never seen any others. It looks very old. Oh, the Arl study? Then he must have found the amulet after I threw it at the wall. And he repaired it and kept it. I don't understand. Why would he do that? Maybe he did. He might even have brought it with him one of those times he came to see me at the monastery. Not that I would have given him a chance, as belligerent as I was to him. Thank you. I mean it. I thought I'd lost this to my own stupidity. I'll need to talk to him about this. The next time I see him, that is. I wish I'd had this a long time ago. Did you remember me mentioning it? Wow. Huh. I'm more used to people not really listening when I go on about things. I don't know what to say. I'm honored. Thanks again. Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? My mother was from Denerim, and I consider myself a Ferelton. Mother served an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orle ruled. When Orle was defeated, and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Orlesian, the lady returned to Orle. She took my mother with her. I was born in Orle, and did not set foot in Ferelden till much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. She wasn't unhappy. We had a good life, and she liked Orle well enough. I loved it, though. Valroyo was so vibrant, colorful. Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecily let me stay with her. I had no one else. She was quite old then, and she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecily than my mother. Strangely, the only thing I really remember of mother was her scent. She kept dried flowers in her closet amongst her clothes. Small white Ferelden wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. They were very rare in Orle. But enough about that. Let us move on. Have you heard much about the Grey Wardens of old? It was said that watching the Wardens ride in on their white griffins was enough to rouse a weary heart and put the dance back in the step of an old man. 
The Grey Wardens were powerful, feared and respected. But they also inspired the common people. I remember a tale that was told to me many years ago. Maker's mercy, it's like talking to a child. Yes, there are griffins in this story. The blight had ravaged the land for months, and the armies of the great kings had amassed for one last stand. As the sun burst through the clouds that boiled and churned in the dark sky above, it illuminated a vast, seething horde of darkspawn, with the archdemon at its head. And it was then, when courage seemed to fail, and all lost to death and despair, that the Grey Wardens came. They arrived with the beating of wings like mighty war drums, and stood before the armies of men. That's not the point of the tale. The Grey Wardens, grim and fearless, marched forth, ever between the men and the encroaching darkspawn. They formed a shield of their own bodies and held that line until the Archdemon was dead and the last darkspawn lay trampled in the dirt, and then demanding neither reward nor recognition for their sacrifice. The Grey Wardens departed. When the clouds finally rolled back and the sun shone full upon the blighted ground, the Great Kings knew that they had lost no men and none of their blood had been spilled. You are observant. This is a tale about no battle the Grey Wardens have fought, and yet about them all. They have always defended us from the Darkspawn, taking losses so we do not have to. People may have forgotten over the centuries, but nothing has changed. This knowledge has been blessing and burden to Grey Wardens past, and now it shall be your blessing and your burden. I've a question, if I may. Well, here's the thing. I swore an oath to serve you, yes? And I understand the quest you're on, and this is all very fine and well. My question pertains to what you intend to do with me once this business is over with, as a point of curiosity. Oh, I imply nothing specific, of course. One simply assumes that once your Grey Warden business is finished, you would have no need of an assassin to follow you about. Am I wrong? Could I? And what if I didn't wish to leave? How should I know? I cannot see the future. What if I liked it here? What if we became fond of each other, hmm? Stranger things have happened. See? I have a tendency to grow on others. You'll see. It is good to know what my options might be, but that is for another time. For now, we have much to do, yes? So! Full of questions, are you? <laughs> I assume you were actually asking whether Flemeth herself gave birth to me. Truly? I do not know. I once asked Flemeth that very question and she merely laughed at me. It is not inconceivable that she could capture a chastened man, or perhaps change to a more attractive form to attract him willingly. I find it more difficult to imagine her with child. As a matter of fact, I remember her being younger once. She had black hair, much like my own, long and lustrous. But how could that be if she is centuries old? Has she become wizened only recently? Or are the tales of her legend only that and nothing more? I do know the tales of Flemeth having many daughters, even though I have never met another. And Flemeth has always treated me as her blood. What an odd thing to say. Why must love enter into the equation? Flemeth taught me everything I needed to learn. How to survive, the meaning of power, the truth of men. If other mothers do not teach these things, then I believe them the lesser. You suppose it's true? Tis true. To indulge in love is to indulge in delusion. Surely a Grey Warden such as yourself does not believe otherwise. I see. Well, we all have our weaknesses, don't we? You called. Speak, then. What were they doing? It did not look like it served any purpose. When do they have time to waste on foolishness? They have much to learn. Yes, I remember days spent in study. 
They learn their place in the world. What do your priests teach the Emekari, if not how to be adults? Then who trained the Emekari? Parents. Are you speaking nonsense on purpose? If you insist on speaking, use real words. Tamasrans. But the Emekari are not theirs. They belong to the Kunari, not the priesthood. Yes. It obviously didn't work for you. I liked it. You are a Grey Warden, yet you know little of your own order. You do not know yourself or what you are for. It was cruel of your people to leave you this way. The Tamasran see that all Kunari know themselves. Why do you hesitate? It is your task to fight the Archdemon, isn't it? And somehow this will bring us closer to the Archdemon? Interesting strategy. At least we would be going in the right direction. I weary of this. Can we move on? Ah, oh. Different? Different than what? Different than a statue? Different than a log? Should I talk in a monotone? Yes, Master, I exist to serve the Master. I shall kill for the Master and only for the Master. Perhaps it expected me to have a booming voice. Recite limericks. <laughs> I can recite limericks, if it likes. Mostly, they involve slaughtering pigeons in creative and invasive manners. I have never met another golem. I have no idea what one might be like, or why I wouldn't be like them. Why? Has it met other golems? Did they not sound as I do? Did I say it was bad? <laughs> it thinks I hang on its every word, waiting for approval. I don't know what other golems might be like, but I am already superior by virtue of my free will. This is a good thing. Imagine the benefits. No need to eat or sleep or perform other... functions. Walk underwater, crush the heads of every opponent. The possibilities are limitless. Barring the occasional thirty years or so of paralysis, there's little to compare. Now stop talking so much. The wagging of its moist little tongue is distracting. What business would the mighty Grey Wardens have with a man like me? Oh? What was this about? I worried this might happen. I hoped it wouldn't be you who came for me. I have no choice. Forgive me, Warden, but I cannot go back with you. Oh, you wish to talk to me? Truly, it's a courtesy for one so well-armed to notice a lowly merchant. Someone has to. Trade with other races can dry up. We surfacers are Orzammar's lifeline. Even if we're denied a cast, the Assembly says we've turned our back on the stone. But they still use the goods we bring. Hypocrites. That's not right. Someone should do something. Maybe it'll change by the time my children are grown. Twice a year. I'm confined to a trade stall in the commons, but I see enough. It's very... closed in. My grandfather says I've lost my stone sense. I was born topside. I don't remember having it. Best of luck to you. Step right. Make us breath. Oh, beg your pardon, friend. You, uh, startled me a bit. Can... can what? I'm sorry, I, uh, I don't know what that... Where is my sword? I, uh, I don't know what you mean, sir. I, I don't have it. I swear by Andraste's knickers. I sold it on the way here. A dwarf near Redcliffe. Dwin, I think his name was. He's the one who has the sword, I promise you. Said he was a collector. We'll see. Vieta, this land is held in trust for the sovereign dwarven kings. I cannot allow entry at this time. King Loghain demands the allegiance of the Desher, or Lords, or whatever you call them in your assembly. I am his appointed messenger. I don't care if you're the King's Wiper. Orzammar will have none but its own until our throne is settled. Who doesn't? If I don't get in, no one should. Orzammar has no king. Endrin I do can return to the stone not three weeks ago, sick over the loss of his sons. The Assembly has gone through a dozen votes without agreeing on a successor. If it is not settled soon, 
we risk a civil war. The Wardens killed King Caelan and nearly doomed Ferelden. They're sworn enemies of King Loghain. Well, that is the Royal Seal. That means only the Assembly is authorized to address it. Grey Warden, you may pass. You're letting in a traitor? And a foreigner? In the name of King Loghain, I demand that you execute this stain on the honor of Ferelden. You... you'll hear of this. King Loghain will see you quartered. You are free to enter Orzammar, Grey Warden. Though I don't know what help you will find. It is the Assembly who makes a king, and a king who nominates his successor. None of it is carried in the blood. Or, as now, when someone tries using the Assembly to pull a coup. Who's to say what my father said in his final hours, when the usurper Harrowmont was the only one by his side? I'll have you thrown in prison. You've bitten off more than you can chew! Handlers, separate these Deshers in the Diamond Quarter. I will not have Balin incite a riot. You not speak that way about the man who should be king! Vieta, surfacer. I'm bid to let you walk the commons, but keep your place. Warden or not, I want order. Surface problems. Well, we have no king to hear you. You can join the shouting at the assembly in the Diamond Quarter if you want. Bunch of Desher lords bickering over sand. Balin, Harrowmont. Is one so different? No paragons here. They've caged themselves for fear of each other. As you've seen, keeping order down among us working people is dodgy. No place for a proper lord. Balin speaks through his second, Vartag Gavorn, in the Assembly. Lord Harrowmont speaks through Doolin Ferender from his estate. Surfacers appoint no paragons? Truly, you're lost in all that sky. They are the best of us, declared living ancestors. If you must be our warden, at least know us. Go to the Shaper of Memories in the Shaperit, the true bright spot in the Diamond Quarter. See, that's why I don't want you surfacers seeing our worst. You'll think that's all we are. The market is thin, but busy, and the tavern never closes. Bad blood is usually kept to the proving. Should toss Balin and Harrowmont in there, sort this all out in a hurry. Personal battles for honor and ancestor. I don't expect a surfacer to understand. Did you see that? I cannot believe what this city has come to. This would never have happened when Endrin was alive. The city is torn apart. King Endrin is dead and the Assembly can't decide who takes the throne. Lord Harrowmont or that monster Balin. Everybody knows he killed his brother Tree and let his father's favorite son take the blame. And many question whether Endrin died abed, as we were told, or whether Balin helped him along. He is a good man, and a skilled general. King Endrin trusted him with his life, and I will do no less. Only as a potential match for one of his sons. He was a good king, stern and fair and just. He died in bed after his eldest son was murdered, and the Assembly condemned his second son for it. I cannot blame him for preferring to join the Ancestors in eternal peace, if Balin didn't murder him himself. I am Narav Helmi. Third daughter of the second matron of House Helmy. And you, stranger? What brings you to Orzammar at such a time? A Grey Warden? That explains why they allowed you past the gates. What kind of aid do you mean? A blight? Now? But our warriors are killing each other in the streets! I'm sorry, stranger. I fear there will be no aid for you in Orzammar. If you seek Lord Harrowmont's support, I suggest you talk with his trusted advisor, Doolin Ferender. He might be able to get you an audience. Show respect, Surfacer. You're in the Hall of Heroes, home to the best of us. Paragons, dwarves who achieve such greatness, they're considered ancestors, even if they yet walk among us. If only we had one now. A unifier. A voice like that, 
there would be no dissension. Surfacers always assume nothing happens underground without them. Many are trying, despite our stalemate. Goodbye, Warden. I hope you're not needed. I trust Vala, stranger. You must be the Grey Warden we heard about. Welcome to Tapsters. I'm Cora, your hostess. How may I serve you? <laughs> so you come to Tapsters? I guess you're not asking for anything official, or you'd be at the Shaperit. But I can certainly give you a mole's eye view. It's the Bureau of all the Shapers in Orzammar, led by the Shaper of Memories. If you're from the surface, I guess you'd call them scholars. They keep all of our records, laws, genealogies. You got questions about Orzammar's history, and don't mind answers in words as long as your leg, that's the place to go. He'd be in the Diamond Quarter. Pardon, the Nobles District. Upstairs from here, however you call it. The Nobles stay upstairs, except when they're slumming. You'll find the Assembly there, the Palace, the Shaperit, and plenty of estates. Down from here is just Dust Town or the Mines, so my recommendation is avoid. It's not part of the city, just some old tunnels where the castles build their nests. No one goes there if they can help it. But if you want fun, your best bet is the Proving. It's a chance for all the best fighters in Orzammar to test their skills. There's a tournament today. Arenas between here and the Diamond Quarter. With 52 types of ale, 17 types of mead, and a dozen imported wines, we should be able to serve your needs. <laughs> what do you have? I recommend a Brachian brew. She has a heavy head and a deep, rich taste. Three silvers gives you a pint. A Brachian brew never fails to hit the spot. One of the Legionnaires claimed he saw a ragged-looking dwarf heading west while he was patrolling the deep roads. When he tried hailing the dwarf, the fellow ran off, screaming. Well, I have other customers to see, too. If you need anything else, just call me over. Afternoon, stranger. You looking for a stool to share a brew? Name's Naveen. I fight with Prince Balin's expeditionary field unit. Yourself? Figured as much. Good folks, wardens. I was in the Deep Roads when that one came by. What was his name? Dukan, Dunka... Uh, something like that. I met him, sure. Good man. Solid. He knows what we go through in the deep roads. Not many do. Not even the ones who live this close. You have to be on the front lines. I go where I'm sent, fight when I'm there, and leave politics where it belongs. Darkspawn. Not much use in turning our weapons elsewhere while those vermin still live. Every Grey Warden ends up there. That's where they send you when you're ready to leave this world. Go die in the dark, putting away as many vermin as you can. Getting more crowded these days, though. Lots of people interested all of a sudden. We go back tomorrow, and we're not the only ones. Balin ordered us in at first bell. He's splitting us into four teams to search for some of the lost tigs. Looking for signs of Bronca, I guess. Seems to be who everyone's after. Bronca was a paragon, some kind of great smith or whatnot. But she went batty and let her old house into the deep roads more than two years ago. No chance she could have survived. And a lot of good men are gonna die looking for her corpse. Excuse me. This brew is starting to taste awful bitter. Lord Denik Helmy, honored desher of the Orzammar Assembly, and terrible disappointment to my esteemed mother, who doesn't like me spending time in taverns. You understand what I'm saying, right? On the surface, there are no casts, and it works fine. Am I right, Warden? You don't get far as the youngest and most outspoken member of the Assembly without keeping an ear to the stone. I heard there was a Grey Warden in town. No offense, but you kind of stand out. But there are those like you who see this with concern, no? Well, I've taken the time to actually talk to the other casts. You know, most smiths and tavern keeps would make decent deshers if we gave them a chance and a seat in the assembly. Orzammar is so mired in tradition, no one bothers asking if the casts are even necessary. Badly. Oh, you're serious? Well, it's simple, I guess. The king and elected deshers of the assembly are at the top. Then it's the nobles. Then the warriors and all the craftsmen. At the bottom are servants. The castless and criminals are below even that. Your caste is determined by that of your same-sex parent. And that's where you stay your whole life, whatever your skill. 
Me and 79 other fine, upstanding examples of how someone who's born into every privilege inevitably wants more. They're not fond of my views on equality. I doubt either candidate has been outside the Diamond Quarter in his life. But Lord Harrimont seems a bit more forgiving. Prince Balin's brilliant, I'll give him that, and subtle as sin. But I don't think anything in Orzammar matters more to him than winning. As you wish. What? Get away! You'll change like the rest! Monsters hidden in all my friends! They follow you. Once you are in the story, they possess your friends and follow. See? I found copies. All from the same pen and older than the ones in song. Dormant my ass. Take them. I want out. Topsiders? Good. Get some outside gold in here. Calm people down. Make them think we should open the gates for good. The more cracks in the old way, the better. That's what Balin stands for. Not your business, but I see where the gold is. He's the traditional pick, yet he wants a new way, whether some like it or not. Just as many say Harrowmont, neither are paragons, and the scales being equal, I go with the promise of more trade. Can't find ore without splitting some stone. My investments are solid, I'll be fine. The assembly has done us a favor. They've shown just how loose the sand is under our feet. It opens people to change. Orzammar will decide what we can or can't be. Blight may be imminent on the surface, but our warriors are well seasoned against dark spawn. There will be topsiders left for trade. There's no end to you. I'll take your gold. You're good for that. Your mind has gone to dust if you think we would pass such a writ. Half our houses would go broke without the surface trade. The proposal is only effective until we have a king to ensure we are respected by the surfacers. Leaving you conveniently positioned to take over all contracts. I'll see your head on a pike first. Deshers, lords and ladies of the assembly. I've already doubled the guard to prevent violence. Must I summon more? Steward Bandalore, Balin's sympathizers are tying our hands with trivialities. They may as well open us to the sky. I suggest we put the matter to a vote. And I suggest you have a taste of my family's mace. Enough! The assembly is in recess until the members can regain control of their emotions. Stone-forsaken fools and dusters. I'm sorry. This is the assembly of the clans. Only dashers and occasional guests of state are allowed in. Forgive me. I am so exhausted. I completely forgot about the message from the gate guard. Welcome to Orzammar, Warden. I hope you can forgive our unrest. The loss of our king has hit us hard. Respect for your role is great, but you won't receive a proper hearing until we have a king on the throne. I must admit, Warden, I am at a loss myself. It lies with Prince Balin or Lord Harrowmont, and they are slow to trust anyone in these uncertain times. Doolin Verender, Harrowmont's man, can be found at the Harrowmont estate. Vartag Gavorn, Prince Balin's second, is often here in the assembly. I only wish there was more I could do for you. I heard there was a Grey Warden here. I am Doolin Forender, second to Lord Harrowmont, King Endrin's own choice as successor. Word is spreading that the surface may suffer a blight. It is shameful we are not in a better position to help. That may be, and that is a terrible risk for the surface. But even if the world would end tomorrow, Lord Harrowmont cannot ignore Balin today. He cannot afford to trust anyone of unproven loyalties. If you wish to show you have no loyalty to Balin, then work against him in Harrowmont's name. Balin is hosting a proving today, supposedly to honor his father's memory. The Deshers take it very seriously. And unfortunately, Balin found some way to blackmail or intimidate House Harrowmont's best fighters into stepping down. That would be enlightening. Though I hope you won't pry too deeply into things they don't wish revealed. If you wish to show your loyalty, enter the proving as his lordship's champion. With your order's reputation, I've no doubt the ancestors would favor your arm. <laughs> and this is to be your king. One who cannot keep his own men from running like frightened children. 
Lord Harrowmont does not use threats or intimidation to motivate his men. He leads by example. Ah, I see. So it's his example they follow as they cower from this Prince Balin. How dare you slander Lord Harrowmont? Why should we ally ourselves with someone too scared even to grant us an audience? I suppose not everyone can face death as undaunted as an Antiven, it's true. Then you agree to fight in Harrowmont's name. Balin would never work with anyone who humiliated him in that way. Harrowmont would have no fear of meeting with you then. Excellent. The arena is located off the commons. Talk to the Proving Master and tell him you're entering Lord Harrowmont's roster. The key fighters we lost were Guidon and Beisel. You can look for them in the fighters' preparation chambers behind the ring. And be sure it's before the fights begin. After the first bout, no one may change the roster. If you need to find me again, I will wait in the Tapster's Tavern off the commons. There is no better place to hear gossip. Perhaps even word of your victory. This is all I have right now. I could get more if I sell something. Well, well. Looks like we have a visitor. Friend of yours? Is there a problem here, friend? Are these men threatening you? Please! Don't get involved with this! You don't know what they're like! Then allow me to make some introductions. These are dangerous times in Orzammar, stranger. Lucky us, the merciful Jarvia is offering protection from the chaos. You're wearing some fancy stuff there might make you a target. So if you want the Carta's guarantee of safety, it's yours for the reasonable price of ten gold sovereigns. Or I can't say what might happen. You really should learn more about the places you visit. The Carta is the foundation of business in Orzammar. It's a commercial venture of like-minded individuals who make money in whatever way suits their talents. You say protection racket, I say honorable business. You say thief, I say dead human. Whoa, whoa! All right, you win. I'm not gonna die for ten lousy sovereigns. Ancestors, bless you for saving my poor store. I don't know how to express my gratitude. I... I've never met her, of course. They say she never leaves Dust Town. That's, uh, the older area of the city where the castless congregate. She's the one directing this depravity. Since good King Endrin died, they're getting bolder. They used to be a problem only in Dust Town, but now they're in the commons, shaking honest men down for coin. A band of castless thugs. They're to blame for all the crime in Orzammar these days. They're criminals, and the children of criminals. The ancestors themselves declared them irredeemable. Their births are abominations. They were born from no Kalna, with no acknowledgement by the Shapers. They are destined to be criminals. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm grateful for your help, but I don't think we have any more to talk about. You new in the fights? I don't remember seeing you before. Was. Name's Guidon, and I just tendered my resignation. Somehow, I don't think the ancestors will favor me today. I fought for House Harrimont in the Deep Roads for 20 years, and will again. I don't regret a minute of that service. But it's my family's job to protect this city, not get caught up in political games better left to the noble cast. It's not so much what happened, as what's going to. I heard from a reliable source Lord Harrimont's already given up the throne. Balin called this whole proving to let his lordship save face when he concedes. Oh? And where did you hear this, that's more reliable than a member of the Assembly? I, uh... I suppose there's nothing his Lordship would do without consulting Doolin. He's always been his top man. Maybe you're right. I I'm just a warrior. I've always tried to stay out of these noble politics. If I find out this whole thing was some flunky of Balin's lying to me for his own gain, I'll... I'll... Maybe I will at that. Never understood why everyone thinks the Grey Wardens are so great. Prince Valen will be happy to hear I've flattened you into the dirt. When the sun shines in Orzammar... 
Don't take it personally. Hanashan's a member of the Silent Sisters. She doesn't talk to anyone. They're an order of female warriors, founded by Astith the Grey, a woman of the warrior caste who first fought for women's right to be soldiers. When no one listened to her words, Astith cut out her tongue and dedicated herself to training until she won a grand proving barehanded. The woman who joined her order cut out their tongues in her honor. I am Ferindin. I serve as Hanashan's trainer and translator. As a silent sister, Hanashan cut out her tongue like the ancient paragon, Astith the Grey. As you might imagine, she requires my services for more mundane tasks. The silent sisters support the sitting king. They are loyal servants to the Idukans. Your bravado is meaningless. When a silent sister fights, she doesn't do it with words. If you would back up your claims, enter the proving. The Ancestors will show who they think is worthy. Look, I already told the Proving Master I withdrew. Do you have to keep harassing me? Well, that sounded genuine. Um, if you weren't looking for me, do me a favor and pretend I never said anything. I left the Proving on my own business, and I have no intention of discussing it. I am, so if you're not here to... How do you know who I am? Oh, don't put it that way. Look, it's just, when I was younger, I had a thing with this Idukan girl, Revelka. Lesser cousin, nowhere near the throne. Her family wanted her marrying up, so they matched her with a BMO. But we didn't exactly stop seeing each other. She's married to a prominent Desher's heir. We should have stopped a long time ago, but... I love her. Do you know what that's like? Now Balin found out, and I can't even help my cousin for fear he'll tell her husband. They have letters. Love letters Ravelka wrote me. If they were made public, she'd be disgraced. Her husband would cast her aside, and I would be lucky to be allowed to die in a duel. N no One of his fighters, a woman named Miyaja, she's the one who threatened to expose me. You'd do that? I don't know how to thank you. I, I know it's my own fault, but I'd have married her if I could. If you can make sure that evidence doesn't get out, I'd be happy to fight in the proving. But you need to find them quickly. Registrations close once the first bout starts. You must be the Grey Warden. Luke John said one of you signed up. They said the Warden's here to fight for Haramut. I guess we'll have to show what kind of tricks we learn in Orzammar. We were born together. We fight together. We'll die together. The Ancestors gave us one soul, but two bodies. Everything we do, we do together. That's a little personal, don't you think? Unless you want to find out. We know plenty. But we don't like to share. Watch out for Darvionic, though. They say he killed his brother. But the Ancestors favored him in the ring, so he never saw punishment. Didn't I say I need to concentrate? There's plenty of time to congratulate me after the fight. Everyone knows about my great triumph. Youngest champion ever! No? The Proving Master announces it every time. So you're the Grey Warden. It's an honor. Really, a privilege. You hear so much about the Wardens. They say on the surface, they're the only ones who fight Darkspawn, and everyone hails them as heroes, and... Uh, are you taking recruits? A Blight? Then that must mean you want recruits. I bet you're here to pick the best fighters. Am I right? If that's true, it must be because of the King. Believe me, Dwarves know their duty in regards to Darkspawn. I promise, as soon as Balin's on the throne, you'll have as big an army as you need. I've fought most of them before, of course. Miyaja and Lukjan are tricky. I learned the hard way. Lukjan is the one you have to watch out for. When Miyaja gets all flashy with that hammer, you never see Lukjan stab you in the back. And Piotin's the best. I mean, he's an Idukan. I've never qualified to fight anyone of his rank before. Well, uh, maybe we can talk after the match. You know, uh, once you see me in action. So you're the Grey Warden Lord Harriman brought in to replace his missing fighters. The Idukans have held the throne for nine generations. The Assembly should have turned to every last member of our line before handing Orzammar over to some lesser family. Just watch.
The ancestors will prove me right in the ring. The proving's almost starting. I should leave if you haven't found anything. Where did you get those? No, 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 no. I, I don't want to know. Just... thank you. I can't say what it means to know my Revelka is safe. I will be glad to fight for Harrimont and the Provings. Thank you again, friend. Watch for Piotr Naidukin. He's won the squad combat four years running. He has 11 decapitations so far. He needs just three more for the one season record. Front row seats at every Grand Proving since my father took me on his shoulders. Name's Varric. I got a controlling interest in a mine off the old Roosten Taig. But my backers know not to hand me a pick any day there's blood on the stone, if you know what I mean. Sure. Like King Endrin was just a noble. Approving is a sacred art. Any dispute brought to the Proving Round is settled by the Ancestor's decision. And no one can protest it. They change from round to round. Sometimes it's bare hands, sometimes weapons, sometimes pairs or squads. It's announced when the fight begins. That's about all the warning anyone gets. Me? Are you out of your mind? I'm a miner, not a warrior. <laughs> Do I know anything? Let me tell you, Selraka. If Varric doesn't know it, it didn't happen in this ring. You want anyone in particular? That halfwit? Picked up a sword at twelve and beat his own moron of a father. Since then, every woman in the warrior caste swoons for him. They have a nice act going. Miaja runs up front with that big hammer, and everyone's heard it's got lyrium vein through it. Then Luke John goes all quiet-like and dirks you in the back. They always get a good response from the crowd. People love the whole martyr cut out your own tongue to please the ancient paragon thing. And they can back it up. Mean fighters, a lot of them. No difference one to the next, though. They dress alike, look alike. Gets a little dull eventually. Now there's a showman. Never does the same thing twice. They say he commissions a new weapon after every proving. I've seen him take out staves with daggers, axes with shields, and mace shield plate combos with double axes. People bet on how he wins, not if. Who? Piotin's a monster. He... He's like a rock slide, a force of nature. Blink and bam, you're dead. And if he's fighting with his team, you'd better watch out. Last time they fought, the entire front row got showered in blood. You should stay and watch the show. There'll be serious blood on the stone tonight. The proving will begin shortly. I'm sure you can find a place in the stands. Or were you here to take part in the fight? Well, that's a surprise. Never thought the Grey Wardens would take an interest in our king. Let me just put you into the schedule here. Now, is there a particular name you wish listed? We'll just call you Grey Warden, seeing as those human names are a real bird to pronounce. We actually have an opening in the first round. Are you ready to start? Looks like Suwern's drawn first bout. He was one of the youngest champions ever. Beat his own father at 12 years old. All for the right to earn his battle status two years early. Are you ready to start? That's what I like to hear. I will warn you, though. This is your last chance to make preparations, or meet the competition. Once the fights begin, there are no new additions to the roster. All withdrawals are treated as losses, and a sign of the Ancestor's disfavor. Do you want to start, or would you like some time? The fighters' quarters are behind the ring. Go down to the ring, then. I'll be right there. This is the glory proving! Fought under the eyes of the Paragons of Orzammar to honor the memory of King Endrin. First up is Suwern of the Warrior Cast. Many of you remember when Suwern made history as a lad of twelve by defeating his own father in this very ring. Today, he fights as a champion for Prince Balan. Opposing him in Lord Haramont's name is a member of the famed Grey Wardens. In the name of House Idukan, and our future King Balin, first warrior to fall is vanquished. Fight! That was an exciting start, Warden. Suwern is rarely trounced, and so thoroughly. This round, Paramount's champion takes on the notorious duo. The warrior casts twin terrors, now fighting for Prince Balin. 
Biaja, and Luke John. May the stone honor you. When you fall. First warrior to fall is vanquished. Fight! Well, that was an exciting bout. Two on one, and you took them both easily. Paramount's champion has held the field so far. But how will he do against one of the legendary Silent Sisters? We'll find out as the Warden faces Lady Hanashan, who proved her worth to Paragon Ashtith the Grey by cutting out her own tongue. And to our Prince Balin by fighting in his name. First warrior to fall is vanquished. Fight! Paramount will be pleased, Warden. The Silent Sister's support was a great boost for Balin. This round is paired combat. Just as Kiatshet fought as King Bloodlick II defending our empire, so have dwarves always fought alongside a second. Master of all weapons, prisoner of none, Wojciech Ivo has never won the same way twice. What will he do today, lords and ladies? And will it win the day for Prince Balin? Grey Warden, choose your second, for you face Wojciech Ivo and Valans. You honor me. Last one standing will be declared victor. Fight! Wojak Ivo is one of the best this arena has seen, Warden. Heramont picked wisely. Only two warriors remain. Fighting for his royal cousin Balin, Piotan Iduken has led his team to triumph over every unit so far. Challenging him on behalf of Lord Heramont, the Grey Warden has risen from nothing to stand at the competition summit. Each will lead a full unit of four soldiers to see once and for all whom the ancestors favor. You fight well, but your judgment is questionable. The throne will never leave House Iduken. You honor me. Last one standing will be declared victor! Fight! The winner is the Grey Warden! Congratulations! You defeated the man Prince Trian himself once called the Horns of my army. Do you deny this Grey Warden has earned the championship? Then it is my honor to declare this Grey Warden champion of the Proving, who has shown that the ancestors favor Lord Heramont. Through this day, we affirm the friendship between our city and your order.